Hi, and welcome to Plan for Wellness. I'm Kathy Favreau. Being my first full podcast, I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself first. I started Plan for Wellness as a place where people of all ages and backgrounds can come together to learn more about taking care of themselves and their families. The reality in America today is that it's an aging country. 10,000 people turn 65 every day, and someone's diagnosed with dementia every 66 seconds. Dementia on its own is on a course to bankrupt the Medicare system before 2050. I don't say that to alarm anyone, it's just a simple fact. Here's another fact. Families are expected to be responsible for the care of their older loved ones, but also setting up a support system for them, and they're provided limited to no resources, where or how to do that, and who's supposed to pay for it. It's confusing, it's frustrating, and it's not working. People end up in hospitals and rehabs with no idea how to navigate it, how to effectively advocate, what's expected, what they can expect from the experience, where it's all gonna lead. Families are subject to the knowledge base of whatever healthcare workers they encounter to help navigate it all, but they're not always told the facts either, not because they intentionally mislead you, but because they haven't worked in every setting. And they just regurgitate whatever it is that they've heard or been told the, how the whole process works for them. So we have an aging population. We have middle-aged or younger relatives trying to help them. And those people have their own health concerns. And they're trying to juggle their families, like kids and grandkids, along with their older relatives. It's that sandwich generation. And they're burnt out. They're run down. And they're stressed beyond belief which is in that turn hurting their health even more. That's why we're here. I'm doing this because all those people I'm talking about, they deserve a voice. They deserve to be understood. They deserve a place to find the information with someone who truly cares about them. I feel like I've been called to do this since I became an occupational therapist. I didn't know it then. I knew I wanted to work in every setting. I wanted to know the inner workings of the whole process from the time Somebody might have received OT in school as a child, straight up until death, honestly, because sometimes even hospice uses OTs. So I knew I wanted to work in the settings and I wanted to know how it all worked, but I didn't really know why. But as my career kept growing and I kept seeing this void and I was helping people in the middle of their storm, they would say things to me like, why isn't this information out there somewhere? Or you need to tell more people these things. All this information is out there in lots of little places if you go searching for it or know what to search for. And then you still have to have the discernment to understand what's fact and what isn't. People turn to social media and they ask others in the same boat, so to speak, because they don't know where else to turn. I have a, a soft spot for older adults and their caregivers. I was raised by a World War II generation, well, my World War II generation grandparents, my, my World War II Marine grandpa. He was a discharged Marine with re residual cardiovascular and lower extremity issues. He passed away only 62 in his sleep and I was 14. It was my first military funeral. It was one of the saddest days of my life. And I floundered after losing him. I lost a little bit of me and I didn't live up to probably the standards at that time that he, I would have otherwise if he was alive. But after growing up, I was a single mom and I was diagnosed with cancer. So at 31, it's just me and my two kids, my bald self, <laughs> just going through life. And I thought I'd always wanted to be a nurse, but then my, I, the preschool called and said they were going to ask my permission to have my son assessed because they thought some of his um like strength his intrinsic strength in his hands and and just just overall um like kind of muscle progression was a little bit slowed so they said can we have him evaluated of course you can well he needed OT his hands were a little bit weaker he needed some of that um fine motor improvement. And I couldn't find an occupational therapist anywhere. They'd all already booked themselves out for the school year. And so I started learning some of the stuff on my own. And then when I finally got somebody in May after graduation to come to my house, she was like, you should go to school and be one. 
And I did. I didn't even think that was possible. I did not picture myself going back to school at that point, but it spoke to me. And I wondered, why didn't I ever explore this before? I believe we're all led to things in the time frame we're supposed to. I call it divine intervention, but it just made sense. It clicked. So after I graduated and started working in multiple settings, I read an independent study in 2016 finding that occupational therapy is the only health profession, a spending category, like where insurance spends money for a certain profession, for a certain discipline to, to treat somebody that had a statistically significant association with lower hospitalization readmission rates. And I thought, that's huge. That costs the government and people a lot of time and money being able to stay home. And that's what we're about. Granted, the study only really looked at heart failure, pneumonia, and heart attacks. But the authors went on to say that occupational therapy places a unique and immediate focus on the patient's functional and social needs, not just whatever health problem that they had. And so this joint study between Johns Hopkins and the University of Maryland was saying because OTs look at the whole person, not just the body part, that we help people stay in their homes longer. So there's my credentials. I'm an occupational therapist with over 15 years experience. I'm a certified dementia practitioner, a certified lymphedema therapist, and a certified geriatric care professional. I've been a lifetime member of the Disabled American Veterans since I was an hour old. I completed my last internship to be an OTR at a VA hospital in honor of my grandfather to kind of bring it all full circle. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, a daughter, a sister, a wife, a blogger, a podcaster, a teacher, and a friend. And I'm here because I care. And because I pray that this platform and all of my platforms, social media, website, whatever, provide people direction and hope and answers and a place to vent and learn. I can't diagnose. I can point people in the right directions. I certainly don't have all the answers since I'm still human, but I do have a lot of them and I can point you in the right direction. I'm here to build a community, to partner with anyone who listens, to make this system work for us instead of the business people who run healthcare. I'm here to help families have a plan and confidence no matter what happens or when that storm hits. People tell me, Kathy, that's a great idea. I don't need it now, but I'll keep it in mind. But that's my mission. My mission is to help you have knowledge and a plan before you need it so that you're prepared and not an emotional wreck in reactionary mode. I have seen so many times that people are fearful and they don't know what's happening. And then they go out and they buy equipment that they don't need, or they end up in situations and rehab centers that they never would have wanted to go to before. Um, and I'm not saying if they, if you need rehab, not to go there, I'm saying you should know what's out there and pick where you want to go and know what places are in your community before you need them. So that's another reason for the podcast. Because if you're just starting, at least you can go back and listen to more and more. And please, please, please share this with people that you know, because I want to build a forum for you, for all of them, for all of us. My father says to me sometimes, what do people do who don't have daughters that work in healthcare? My sister's about to be a paramedic. She's an EMT. My daughter's a nursing student and works with developmentally delayed people. And I'm an occupational therapist. We can direct him in all sorts of things. And he's like, what do people do who don't have you? I said, they just kind of ask each other and hope to get by for the most part. They rely on whoever it is that they can find and hope that they're being told the facts. I know a ton of healthcare workers who don't know plenty of this though. They, they, they live in the, in the setting that they know. I am friends with a nurse that was always in the OR. That's what she knows. My grandson was born with a heart condition and he needed open heart surgery when he was six months old. I'll never forget the day that I met this amazing pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. I was with my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandson. And this doctor is like a rock star. He is wonderful and amazing. 
And we had a list of written questions, obviously. This is a very important, huge surgery. And this little baby. And he asked me what I did for a living. So after I told him, he said, when I'm done reviewing everything that you need to know, would you mind giving me a few moments of your time so you can help me know what I need to know? And I was like, of course. So it turns out his mom had to go to a rehab and he didn't know how any of that worked. He can fix a little itty bitty heart, you know, the size of that baby's fist. He could go in there and fix it, but he didn't know how a rehab worked. He didn't know how his mom's aging and progression and whatever was going to happen. Like he didn't know what to prepare for or what to advocate for or what to ask for. And he came looking to me for those inf for that information. This man's a superhero in my book. But we both have our own skill sets and our own level of knowledge that makes us experts on something different. So we all have a knowledge base. We all have a superpower to share with the world, including you. So that's my how and my why. I want to know about you too. So I hope that you send me messages um, at my website or leave them on my YouTube channel. Uh, the website is www.planforwellness.net. They go straight to my email. I will respond to them and take feedback, do shows on topics that you guys are looking for. This show is about what you need, not what I think you need. So what types of things are we going to talk about? Anything. From diagnoses that you're already dealing with and how to manage it and prevent it from becoming a bigger problem, to home modifications, to how to have your forever home ready to age into, to dementia, to bereavement, living with cancer, lymphedema, sexuality, spirituality, long-term care, who pays for what, um, insurances, you name it. We can talk about all those and then some. And I'm lining up some pretty cool guests to be on the show so we can discuss their special superpowers and knowledge base too. Again, I want to know about you. This isn't about me. It's a platform for me to help as many people as I can. And I love people's stories. Everyone has one. I've worked with local celebrities, scientists, police officers, and engineers, entrepreneurs, musicians, athletes, vets veterans. Um, I never gets old. I love meeting new people and learning from them, not just about them. And you're the same. So as I close down my first podcast and what I hope to do here, which is partnering with you, um, I want to sincerely thank you for taking the time to listen. Your time is valuable and I never want you to think that I take it for granted that you choose to listen to me. So if that resonates with you, and if you think I have good stuff to share and that you can learn and want to be a part of this community, I hope that you subscribe to the YouTube station and the podcast and um, help me build this community, share it with as many people as you can so that together we can facilitate change and help as many people as we can. I look forward to it and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye guys.